If you're searching how to count cells by color in Excel, you're probably shocked and disappointed to find out that there's no built-in function for this. But don't worry, I've done the legwork for you and I've found the two easiest ways to count or sum cells by color in Excel. The first method is quick, easy, and best for one time or occasional use. The second method is more complex using Excel VBA and is best for setting up a repeatable process or an automated spreadsheet. Plus, stick around to the end for a bonus hot take. Hi, I'm I'm Rebecca and I teach Excel users how to create spreadsheets they can be proud of. If you use Excel in any capacity, you're in the right place. Check out the description for a link to my free training, The Spreadsheet Tune-Up. In five short videos, I'll show you the first steps that can help you to optimize any spreadsheet. This is the data that we're working with. It is a list of names and some of them are highlighted blue, some of them are highlighted purple. Let's say your boss came in and did this highlighting based on some um, subjective thing and now wants to know how many are highlighted blue and how many are purple. The first thing that I would always do is format your data as an Excel table like this is. The way that to do that is to go to insert and then click table. This is already formatted as a table because I do this almost automatically. It's my number one step always if you need help with this check out the spreadsheet tune-up the link is in the description i have a whole video just about how to set up excel tables anyway the quick and dirty method would be to use this filter button these come automatically with tables and filter by color or to sort by color let's start with sort by color and you can do this so now the blue is all together sort by color again and now the purple is all together and then just select all of these. This is the formula free method, by the way, select all of the one color and then view down here in this, um, in this toolbar, you can see that there is a count here. And the cool thing is, as you can see, I'm hovering over it. When I click on it, now this count is copied to the clipboard, to the, to the clipboard and I can just paste it up here. Ta-da. Now select all of these ones that are highlighted here. Go back down here to this count and click on it. Go back up here and paste. Ta-da, see, I did that in like five seconds. Um, so that's the very quick version. If you wanted a formula to do this, here's, here's what I would do. We can sort this again by name to kind of reshuffle everything. And the formula I would use is called aggregate. It's a great formula because um, you can do a lot of different functions in the one formula. So the functions are, you can use count um, for numbers, count A, and you can just click on these, uh, count, count A, which uh, does a count of text, and sum if you're using numbers. Um, those are the three that I would really stick to. So this is text, so I'm gonna use count A, and then in these options, I'm going to ignore hidden rows. And you'll see why in a second. Um, now, the next argument is array. So if you know the name of your table, you can use that as a structured reference, or you can just click on it with this little black arrow and it automatically puts in the structured reference, which means meaning response is the name of my table and the name is the name of my column. So it's really nice to be able to reference your data by name instead of by location, instead of using traditional cell references. I love doing this. Okay, so we're gonna close the parentheses. Now aggregate is counting all of everything that's visible in this column. So now what I have to do, actually, I'm going to go, I'm going to copy this and paste the formula into the next one. So now I have both. Okay. Now, um, we have the formula done. Now we have to do a little bit of like manual work in order to get the real number. So we would go to filter by color and then select the color. So now you can see, we only can see 12 rows because there's only 12 blue rows and both of them that have the function are 12. So now I would again, copy and paste values to bake that in. So now it's a value and not ruled by the formula. So now I would do that again for the next color. There we go. And then copy and paste to bake that in. So it's not quite dynamic 
but if you had a huge table that it would be difficult to use the first method where you select, um, this is the way that I would do it. So those are the two ways that are quick and easy that can help you to count cells by color. And with the aggregate function, that would also work for a sum by color. The next method uses Excel VBA, which is like a programming language that's built into Excel. You can ex access this by clicking on the developer tab and then Visual Basic, or you can use the keyboard shortcut Alt F11. This opens up the Visual Basic editor. Now we're going to create a user defined function. We're creating our own function in Excel. The key is you have to insert it into a module, not one of these. All of these objects are for each sheet in the workbook. And then this workbook is just a general overall workbook wide place that houses code. It's blank right now because we don't have any code, but you have to right click insert and then module. And that just creates another place where you can put code. User defined functions have to be in a module, not in any of these Microsoft Excel objects. Ask me how I know I made that mistake. <laughs> so this is the user defined function. I'll have this entire, um, all of this code in the description box for you. You don't have to write a single thing, but I, I just want to point out it, it's called choose color. So once you paste that here, you can save it and close the VBA editor. Now this function, choose color, here you go, you start typing it in, is accessible in Excel. So choose color and there's two arguments. The first is the array that you wanna search or that you wanna, uh, that you wanna choose the colors from <laughs> and then comma and then the next argument is what I call a reference cell which is um, what color do you want to look for and then I'll close parentheses and you can see how it works is it creates a it creates a dynamic array which is like a spill array of all of the names or of the the cells in the lookup array that are that color so you can see how We've got all the names that are blue here. And you can play around with this. If I make this to be F2, which has purple color, now it's returning a totally different list. If I make this be F3, which has no color, you can see it's returning all the names that don't have any color. So it's, it's totally, um, it's totally dynamic. So see Aldo is the first name. It's not, not shaded at all. So we can also change, sorry, we can change this and then go into that function and like rerun it. And it returns an error if there are no matches. So in order to get the sum or the count, we need to do a little bit extra in, in this function. So let's go back to F1. Okay, now these are all of the names that have the same color as this cell, which is blue. So the next thing we're going to do is up here in the formula bar, we're gonna add another function around it called rows and wrapping it in parentheses. And you can see that that just returns the number of rows. So this is now a complete uh, function. However, if you use, if we go back to F3 and there are none, then we have an error. So to make this really dynamic and really always return exactly what we want, we're gonna wrap it in another function called if error. And that will give us, it, it gives you an op opportunity to feed or to input a specific value or output a specific value if there's an error. So if this whole thing, which accounts the number of rows that are that match that color, returns an error, we want the value of the cell to be zero because that means there are none. So now I've added these formulas to these cells up here and they reference themselves here, F1, F2, F3. And these are the exact right numbers that we would expect. So it did successfully count the cells by color. There is one caveat though, which is that Excel will only recalculate user-defined functions when 
one of the inputs changes. So if anything in this column changes, so if we just go in here and then even just hit enter, it will recalculate these formulas. Or if you go in here and hit enter. So let's color one of these, this color, and see it, does, it didn't change. But if we go in here and then just hit enter, it'll recalculate it. In order to get around that, let's say you, you wanna give this spreadsheet to somebody else and they don't know about that rule, um, I would I would not want to just hand this off and be like, hey, it works, and then someone be you know confused about that. When when does it recalculate? So in order to fix that, I recommend adding a button. I absolutely love adding buttons in Excel because they're really impressive to people. So go up to this Developer tab, go to Insert, and then click on this first form control, and it's a button. And now you can see this little cross that allows you to draw the shape that you want your button to be. And then it will open this window that lets you assign a macro. And if you don't already have a macro, you probably don't, you can click new. And that will open up a new module in your Visual Basic editor. And it's creating a new sub, which is like a subroutine that will run when you click the button. So you only need to type one thing in here and it's called application dot and you can just start start typing it calculate full you can go down here calculate full so now it will run this command when you click the button so save that close visual visual basic and then you can right click and edit the text i would call this recalculate okay now let's make some changes and I'm going to add some more purple and then click on recalculate and you can see that all of these recalculated we only saw a change in the purple one so now what happens if we change the highlight of this one um, nothing happens see but if we recalculate now it's showing the correct number which is zero now how does this work if we have more than one column the quick and dirty method that i showed you doesn't work that well if you have more than one column that's highlighted but here's here's how you can do it if you have a 2d array with the same vba function in fact everything's the same i'm going to just change the array which is the first argument and choose color and i'm going to choose all the data in this table and it's referencing itself as the second argument and then hit enter and you can see that it now is counting all of the numbers that are in this array so i'm going to drag this down and you can see it made a full copy so i'm going to click on this button and say fill without formatting and now we have a count of the numbers that have a certain color in this array. Now we can modify this formula if you wanted to do a sum, if you wanted to add it up. Let's, let's just go out here and um, build that from scratch because it, it's a little bit different if you're wanting to do a sum. Okay, so now you can see that here's the list of numbers. So if we wanted to add it up, all we have to do is add the sum function to the outside, and now it's adding it up. So up here, we can just do the same thing. Sum. If the result is zero, if there are none, you can see it's still returning a value, so I would still wrap it in that um, if error function just like this so I've got if error and then instead of rows which counts the number of rows I've used the sum function and so it will take a sum of all the cells and not just count them so that's how to use the VBA function to, on a 2d array and to use the sum function as well now here's my hot take you should be doing everything possible to avoid this problem. Being able to count the cells that are highlighted means that somebody went in there and highlighted cells using subjective um, criteria. They just went in, went in and not randomly, but based on some kind of something in their brain, they went in there and highlighted some cells. 
if at all possible, if you want your spreadsheet to be repeatable, being able to be used by a lot of other people, it would be better to let Excel do that work for you. And you can set up a helper column. This is how I would do it. If you wanted it to be highlighted and to be able to have a count or a sum, I would create a helper column where you use the if function to put in whatever that criteria is. Hopefully it's something that is easy for Excel to calculate. If, if a human can do it, Excel probably can do it. And so this is just saying if the December column is greater than the November column, then the value is one, otherwise zero. So now this helper column is one anytime you would want this to be highlighted and it's zero for any time you would not want it to be highlighted. Then we can set up conditional formatting. I'm going to highlight December and then go to conditional formatting and then say new rule. Use a formula to determine which cells to format and stick with me. The formula here is going to be if equals if open and then I'm going to select the cell that is um, relative to the very top cell in my applies to range and I want the row to be able to change so it's going to be E3 equals 1 and that's the that's the criteria then true otherwise false okay now the format is whatever color you would want Let's do green. I'm going to click OK and OK. And now you can see that anytime there's a one in the helper column, December is highlighted green. Now we are going to not sum these green colors or, you know, count them. We're going to be counting the helper column and that makes it totally dynamic, reproducible. So now here we're going to say count open parentheses and then select the helper column. So the helper column helps us to do the highlighting and do the sum or the count. And now we can just hide it away and nobody ever has to see it. And we don't have to do this manually. We don't have to highlight manually and we don't have to add up the number of cells manually. So that's my hot take. So what's your take? Do you prefer the quick method or the VBA method? Do you think we should avoid this problem altogether? I'd love to hear what you think.